Uh, let's run through uh, some more types of uh, estuaries before we go to uh, estuarine circulations, right? So lagoons, we already mentioned and we looked at the uh, coastal uh, physiographies, uh, the positional coast, uh, the way waves work and the circulation, uh, the longshore drift works, you end up with a, a barrier like this, which traps some of the water behind the lagoon, uh, behind the barrier. Uh, uh, and you end up with this uh, uh, lagoon with a head which is getting probably some uh, uh, fresh water through the rivers and so on and you have the mouth which connects it to uh, the ocean so the tidal range is going to be very high here uh, you can see the tidal range is very high at the mouth but the tides get greatly damped as uh, you go up into the lagoon. This is different than the Bay of Fundy where you had a huge estuary uh, that is uh, getting tidal range coming in all the way and am getting amplified, right? So they are protected shallow water bodies landward of the barrier islands. There is a fresh water, so you can see the salinity here. Salinity is going to be the lowest here. The scale is not shown, but typically uh, it would be brackish water. The fresh water that we drink usually has less than three parts per thousand uh, uh, salinity. If you have no salts, no minerals, the water tastes terrible, actually. So even when they produce purified bottled water for you, sometimes they add mineral back, minerals back for taste. Okay, So 10 parts per thousand is kind of uh, the line here. As you go towards the mo uh, mouth of the lagoon, based on the seasonality, based on the season, so you can have a dry season and a rainy season, and it's not the rain on the lagoon, it's the rain on the watershed which is flowing into the lagoon, right? So the rainy season, obviously the salinity is lower, but still you have high salinity towards the mouth of the uh, lagoon and decreasing salinity into the, towards the head. And during the dry season, the salinity is increased and mixing can be increased because dry season evaporation that's how you increased the uh, salinity to some extent also by reducing the inflow of low salinity water of course but the that evaporation can cause a little bit of heavier water and mixing but usually winds do most of the work because these are typically very shallow okay so the the salt water zone is towards the mouth and there are some places where you can get hyper saline water what do we mean? Here is an example of a hypersaline uh, estuary. Uh, this is in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, off of the uh, Texas coast in the southeast. And you can see the salinity range here. Ocean is uh, usually less than uh, 35 parts per thousand, right? Already you have 35 to uh, 40 even at the inlet. And as you go behind the barrier island of Mustang, Padre, and so on, the water is fairly shallow, just a uh, few meters. And the salinity can get over 50 parts per thousand. Remember we saw Dead Sea, which has several hundred parts per thousand, so you can basically walk, float in the Dead Sea. This is also nice, salty water, good for your skin. And these regions are very popular for the so-called spring break. College students get a spring break for a week in March, uh, around March, and they all uh, rush to the beaches. Obviously, this spring already was affected by COVID. Maybe next spring is also going to be affected by COVID, right? Laguna Madre, is f uh, pro uh, is f it formed uh, 6,000 years ago as a part of the coastal movement uh, in the post-glacial subsidence. So land is sinking after the last ice age ended about 12,000 years ago. Has a huge temperature range because the waters are so shallow. Winter can cool it quite a bit and summers can warm it quite a bit. It's hypersaline and it's basically a marsh that was sunk uh, by the uh, open ocean sand beach. Okay. Let's look at some marginal seas. We moved the terminology from estuaries to marginal seas. 
seas, oceans, we had seen in the first chapter that the definitions are fluid, but you have some sense of what we mean. So we say Atlantic Ocean, Mediterranean Sea, Arabian Sea, Bay of Bengal, and so on, right? So they are mostly semi-isolated, mostly formed by tectonic events like the Mediterranean Sea and the the volcanic island which is also a tectonic event which formed the chain of Caribbean islands and the Caribbean Sea which is separated from the Atlantic Ocean. They tend to be shallower than the ocean but they are connected to the ocean and we'll see that these uh, seas have some interesting uh, circulation features as well depends on how the densities uh, are changing so remember in the estuary we said ocean water is heavier and comes in at the bottom and fresh water from the estuaries tends to go out. That's not always the case as we will see.